again, and welcome to another edition of K-Sports Sunday. I'm your host, Alex Barth, and we're joined by Jake. I got it wrong last week. Did I get it this time? Nope. Jake. <laughs> no. Not Jake. Darn. Jeff. Jeff, Max, <laughs> Ryland, and Jason. And we'll have other people joining us later. we got a great show for you tonight. We'll talk college hoops. Who's Final Four bound? YBA instructor Jimmy Myers goes one-on-one -on -one with Max Block, breaking down the NCAA tournament. We'll also have part two of our conversation with ex-NFL pro Peter Cronin. We'll talk about the lockout and a lot more. So let's get started. Big news. We're in March. So that means March Madness. The NCAA tourney. VCU continues their magical run and make, making them the third of the Final Four teams. By the end of tonight, we will know all Final Four NCAA teams. So let's take a look at some of the games that happened yesterday. Two games that came right down to the buzzer. You had both UConn and... Butler winning on the fi at the final second. Butler continues yet another, another Cinderella one. Guys, how much are you loving these close games? Uh, I think they're great for college basketball, to be honest. Um, you know, this is what really attracts the fans. These last second, you know, uh, last possession games where it comes down to the buzzard. The Butler game was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, when they went against Florida, everybody likes seeing the underdogs win. It was a great opportunity to, uh, you know, watch Butler, uh, you know, come out against, uh, get, come out against Florida. So I think it was a great win. Oh yeah, it's great. I mean, for them to be, for the games to be so close, it's just so much more entertaining than any game that's like a twenty-point blowout because. If that was the way the games were, the NCAA tournament would have no interest by now because everybody's brackets ruined. They're just teams that lots of people don't care much about. But since there's so, such close games and there's Cinderella stories and everything, it really brings the fans in and really shows you what the NCAA tournament's all about. And you know, this is what makes March Madness so great. This tournament, no matter how low seeded your team is, they are they just at the beginning of this year. Everybody was like, oh, it's not an upset year. I really don't feel it. Well, look, there's VCU. There's Butler. UConn is still going on their great streak. And, th and they're just, there's, some, and there's a great game going on right now, North Carolina versus Kentucky. It, it, this is a, I mean, it's a great team, and it was a great game last night. Uh, the um, uh, Butler, uh, Bulldogs. Uh, yeah, the Butler game last night. A very close game. You know, this is going to come down to the year of the upsets with Moorhead State winning. You had Richmond and Moorhead State, a 12 and a 13 seed in the second round. Who would have, I don't think anyone predicted VC, to have VCU and Butler in the final four. Um, just some amazing games this entire tournament. Game. And, you know, I think Butler could go all the way. And as you see here, Butler taking it to the uh, Mr. Mac, Mac attack, as they, as they call him down in Butler, taking it to the hole. Um, you know, Butler played an extraordinary game, whether it was on offense and defense. Um, like their, their senior leader, Thompson, made a lot of big plays for them down the stretch that really helped them, you know, lead it on to that, uh, for them to have that win. Then you see here, uh, their point guard, Walker, taking that final three at the end of regulation, but missing. So they go into overtime, and Mr. Mack misses with the, but their freshman, Mr. Marshall, puts it back with the foul, to, so Butler goes up by three. And at the last seconds, Florida misses, so Butler wins 74-71. And lo looking at some of these last second shots, uh, we, we've seen a lot of it, and it seems like every shot you go away saying, they couldn't have found a better shot, why would he take that shot? Do you think it's just the pressure, or are teams really getting the best shot they can and there's being some great defense played in the clutch? Well, in, in my opinion, I think that teams really don't seem to know what they're doing in the last seconds because, as you can see in the, <clears throat> in the Florida Butler game, at the end of regulation, Florida took a far away three when they had a lot of time left on the clock and could have easily worked it down low, gotten a better shot, maybe gotten fouled. That can't be what Billy Donovan wanted as the coach. But instead, all these teams just take fadeaway threes and see if they can win it instead of actually trying to run a strong offense and getting open for a clean look that can actually win them the game. And I think this says a lot about the Florida coaching. When you have the final possession in a tied ball game with 20 seconds left, and all you can do is put your point guard with a contested three, you know, a 35-foot, you know, attempt, just flailing it up, you know, that doesn't say a lot about your coaching. 
you need to come in there with a better strategy of how you can actually score a basket and how you can legitimate, legitimately win this game without forcing it going into overtime. I mean, you, the, you, uh, the UConn game, it was, uh, it was just such a good, uh, close game. And at the end, Arizona had three chances that they could have uh, won it with. They had two threes and then t with time expiring underneath the hoop. You just think, can you force and drive it to the hole to actually try to get a better shot in there other than taking two threes and hoping that the prayer goes in? Yeah, I think people, um, the players really need to try and get some better shots. I mean, like you said, Jeff, it was 20 seconds left. They just got to relax and take their time and realize how much time there actually is. And speaking of clutch, we go over now to the other game. You had UConn and Arizona, another one that came down to the last minute. UConn, the team I have going all the way. And I just want to say before you guys go, this team just so clutch. Kemba Walker, especially, so clutch. UConn's down 10. He will hit a 10-point shot, get fouled, hit the free throw, and then steal the inbound pass. And we saw it here, and it looks like that's going to come uh, in handy down the rest of the tournament. Guys, what do you think of UConn going into the Final Four? Well, I think they are... They've proven themselves to get better uh, each and every game, you know, with the whether it's Kemba Walker and his ability to create shots and, you know, just make everything. Or the freshman, Jeremy Lamb, who I think was a real big uh, role of yesterday's game and their win, uh, you know, knocking down baseline jump shots down the stretch of the game. So I think he was a big component in their win. So he's a good addition to the team. Well, I think that UConn is obviously the favorite going in based on brackets and stats and what the experts see, and they have Kemba Walker, of course. But I don't have them going all the way because I think that if they play Butler or a team like VCU, those teams, especially like VCU that hasn't been there before, they will get pumped up. They will put everything they have into this game, knowing that this is the first Final Four appearance in school history. And it, I don't think that a team like UConn feels the same way and will have the same emotion going into it as a team like VCU. And that's where they could lose a little bit of ground and maybe get upset there. I mean, UConn, uh, at the beginning of the season, everybody was saying, oh, well, they played the Big East tournament. They're tired after the five uh, straight games. They weren't tired. They came into your heart. Kemble Walker is just so good. They're my favorite in, the la in these four last teams. Yeah, I think UConn's definitely going to go all the way with no number one seeds left. Um, you know, Kentucky, UNC um, playing right now. If UNC wins, they'll be the highest seed as a two seed. But you know what? This year, seeds didn't matter. I had always saw Pittsburgh losing in the second round. I think UConn's going to go all the way. And so now looking at the first game, you have 8 Butler and 11 VCU. That will be the Final Four game we know right now. An 8 seed and 11 seed, uh, I believe, I didn't do the research, I believe that's the lowest two seeds to ever play each other in a Final Four game. Both teams, the Cinderella story, the classic low seed, got through, made the upsets. VCU, a team, it's, Butler had been there before, VCU, a team that really people didn't even think of coming in. They were a playing team to start off start off the bracket, a playing at the 11 seed with the new rules this year. Guys, break down this game for us, and who do you like? Um, you know, i first like to say that both these teams are just really exciting to watch. They're both scrappy, have a lot of energy, and, you know, they continue to make plays down the stretch. Um, as far as who I think will win this game, I have to go Butler. I mean, last year they, they were here before. Obviously, experience helps. So, you know, I have to go with, uh, yeah, I have to go with the Butler Bulldogs in this one. I think this game is going to be really close, but I'm going to go with but with uh, Butler also. You can just see how good Howard is, number 54, for Butler. He can shoot from inside, can shoot from outside, and even when he's having an off game, his teammates step up and can really pull up the load. As you saw again in the Florida game, they weren't playing well from inside, they weren't shooting well from outside, they had a terrible game from the free throw line, and they still managed to pull it out. That just shows you how much perseverance they have and how much skill they have spread throughout their roster. I mean, I have to go with VCU. VCU has shown that they can beat all these teams. They had to even they had to play to win their way into this tournament. They weren't even expected to win the first round. They weren't even expected to get into this tournament in the first place. They have shown that they can play against some of the best teams, and they beat those teams. Now they're playing against Butler, another great team. They have the momentum in here. Not saying that Butler doesn't, but VCU is just a team for me. Yeah, I have to go with Ryland. VCU just coming off the win against Kansas. That's going to give them even more momentum that they've already had. And Butler, 
beating Pittsburgh, as I said before, in the second round. I think VCU has more momentum. They can use that to their advantage, and they're going to go to the championship. Well, I will say I will say this quickly. One thing about VCU: Butler looked bad against Florida and ended up pulling it out. They're going to have to play better, and if they play the same way they did against Florida, I definitely see VCU having a legitimate chance. And the way that I think that Butler will really win that game is they have to do the little things, and that's why Butler is so good because they make those free throws. You know, they're good on defense. You know, they do all those little things that is necessary to win a big game. But a big stat for them against Florida, allowing they were out rebounded by 17, allowing double digit offensive rebounds. And Florida is then, um, you got to expect the team to capitalize on that. I think they were lucky to get by with that. Going over to the other side, you'll have UConn against either Kentucky or UNC. That game is going on right now, the four seed versus the two seed. So, guys, who do you like in Kentucky, U- Kentucky UNC? And then who do you like out of that against UConn? Um, for me, I have to go with North, North Carolina. Um, for me, since Kansas just got knocked out, they're my favorite team. Um, you know, I believe they have the best front court in all of college basketball with, uh, you know, Tyler Zeller. He's just unbeatable. And then with Harrison Barnes up top, uh, you know, I really see no weakness in their game. And as far as uh, Kentucky goes, yeah, they have Brandon Knight. Yes, he is, you know, one of the best scorers in the NCAA, but I just see UNT has more of a complete and well-rounded team than uh, Kentucky. Well, I'm going to have to go with Kentucky. I've seen UNC struggle a little bit through the tournament. I'm not sure if they deserved a two seed going in. I would have ranked them more with a three or a four seed. And out of that, I take UConn over Kentucky just because of how good UConn has been lately and how good Kemba Walker has played. It's just been amazing watching UConn going through this. Having said that, I do not think UConn will win the entire tournament. I think they will get beat by either Butler or VCU. Yeah, I have to. I have to agree. Kentucky is. I think they're the stronger team out of you. Uh, out of the the of uh, them. I think they're also gonna. But they're gonna lose to UConn. UConn is just so good. They're not just good with Kemba Walker. They have many supporting players, and that's how you win a team. A team support, and that's how you're gonna win a uh, championship. Not just one player. Yeah, I like Kentucky. I think they were a little underseeded. They won the SEC championship. And Kentucky beat, just beating Ohio State looked like to be number one seed in the entire tournament. Um, and I think UConn will be Kentucky. UConn uh, very consistent ever since the Big East tournament. Um, they could go all the way, although you definitely have to watch out for VCU. So five teams left. Who's your, if you had to make a bracket from these five teams, who's your favorite right now? Uh, I would have to go UNC, definitely. They have, like I said before, the best front court in all of college basketball. I'm going to go with Butler. They came very close last year, two points away, just a few inches off on that final shot from beating Duke. And as I said earlier, I think it will be them against UConn in the final game. But I feel like UConn might let their guard down a little bit, playing a much weaker team, and Butler could really upset them. Let's go with UConn. Kemble, too good. They're going to win. Yeah, I agree with um, Rylan UConn on a big roll, as I said before, ever since um, the Big East tournament. Um, I see them as unstoppable now that they're in the Final Four, and I definitely have them going all the way.